Hey guys, Dave Mead, Mead Longbows. Today we're going to do some penetration testing with a slate arrowhead. A lot of people will say that with primitive gear, especially with stone points, it is hard to harvest a turkey. It's hard enough just to get close to those little creatures, but to actually put an arrow into them, into their vitals, and penetrate their wing structure, they're a pretty tough creature. I know a lot of people have harvested uh, turkey with my horse bows but and using stone points and steel points but I, I don't believe anyone has ever tried it with slate now I made this watching my buddy uh, Creek Stewart's course it's a how-to video on how to make these and you know you find a lot more of this laying around than you do good size flint and chert to make actual flint points you once you watch his how-to video you'll be amazed at how easy it is to make one of these. Okay, so let's talk about this point a little. Now, it's legal in size for where I live, which is seven eighths of an inch. Okay, and we're allowed to use stone points. They don't specify what kind. Um, whether or not this will do the job, I'm not sure we're gonna find out today. But I can tell you one thing, that I got it pretty sharp, that I really wouldn't wanna run this hard across my skin. I definitely wouldn't want to be shot by it. That's for sure. So I hafted it onto this bamboo shaft, and this is a really stout shaft. This is something that I was shooting out of a war bow. I'll show you that in a second. So here's the war bow that I was speaking about. It's a hickory long bow, but it does pull over 90 pounds at full draw. Um, I made this specifically for a, a challenge to myself to shoot in response to a video that Shadowversity put out, and I'll put a a link below to that great video it's about shooting on the right side of the bow with Mediterranean draw this bow I'm gonna use it today but what I did was I reflexed the tips so those of you that have been watching you'll know that this was it was just a straight longbow before that was pulling over 90 pounds and uh, I reflexed the tips which increased its draw weight and performance and the reason I did that is because I saw Todd's workshop video on waxing the um, arrowheads. And that was pretty cool because I wax arrow shafts. I have in the past. I have not waxed the heads. So I'm going to try that today too. Um, but his killer crossbow that he was using was 350 pounds. And he said it was equivalent to a 70, 80 pound longbow. So this now at a shorter draw length, which mine usually is somewhere around 27 inches when shooting just comfortably and faster. Uh, at 27, this is pulling about 77 pounds now. So that falls right into those parameters. So we're gonna use this today, and I'm gonna short draw it when we shoot through this target, which I'm gonna show you right now. Okay, so no, it's not that cow. Although many of you would like to see that, that's not what we're shooting today. It is that intact turkey wing right there. Okay, it's missing some feathers because I've used them for fletching on arrows, but the, the heavy duty part of the wing is intact and that's the hardest part to penetrate, so that's what we're going to shoot at today. And first, we're going to do it with no wax, and then second, we're going to do it with wax and see how much further it gets into there. Now, the target behind that, the backstop behind the wing, is dense foam. It's just packed with dense foam, so I'll be able to definitely measure on the shaft penetration difference. All right, the cow's moved on, so let's go ahead and give this a whirl. We're gonna shoot on the right side of the bow with Mediterranean draw. Here we go. Slate point, shot one. Oh, dead center. Couldn't ask for better than that. Let's go in and I mean, it went completely through, and it's in that foam. I can tell by how much shaft is in there. <laughs> we have to find out if the slate point is still intact. Let's go take a look. All right, I'm back. That was a mess. Um, I didn't want to... It would drag the video out. I had to cut it out of... I had to dismantle a target to get this out without having to rip the point off. But this thing is still intact. Um, it went completely through the wing and it almost came out the backside of my target So uh, What I'm gonna do now is I'm not gonna shoot at that again 
plus I destroyed it practically to get it out. I have here a piece of dense foam. It's solid foam and the cows are back down as you can hear. So they're, they're in my backdrop. So right now I have a dense piece of foam and what I'm gonna do is that comparison for you. I'm gonna use, this is a 40 pound horse bow and I backed it with a really inexpensive, super easy to find material. And this, I teach you how to do this in that course as well. The same course that where Creek teaches you how to make these slate points, I teach you how to back your bows with the simplest backing material around. So. This bow shoots pretty fast, it's only 40 pounds though, but what we're gonna do is, that's not gonna matter, we're gonna do a comparison on a dry shot into the foam, see how far it penetrates, and then wax it and shoot it again. All right, so let's, let's do that. We're just going close range, same range, both shots. This arrow may not fly perfect out of this bow because this is only 40 pounds, while they do shoot pretty fast, this arrow is pretty stiff. So that's why I wanted to be kind of close, and see if I can get decent penetration. All right, so there's shot one. I'm gonna pull it out and see how far it went into this solid foam block. As you can see, the point's still intact pretty good. I'm gonna measure it from the tip of the point to my finger. So we're looking at seven and a half inches. That's still on there pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is, he used beeswax in his video. I think back in medieval times they would have used beeswax or tallow, which tallow might be a little more slick than beeswax. Beeswax kinda has a tacky um, feel to it. While they all do in penetration, they, you know, friction, they kind of, the temperature rises, so they might melt. This has a very, uh, a low melting point. It's a much slicker wax. This is paraffin wax. This wasn't available in medieval times, but it's available now. So this test with this slate, which is still available now, is something that we might be able to use results from and see what happens. So I'm just gonna wax the shaft hoping that it penetrates this much further, but we'll see. I'm gonna wax the shaft. I do this on my shafts, so you can see where it's been used. I, I wax my bows with this too, because paraffin wax I find to be really good at a moisture um, protection. And um, I use it on my strings and my string grooves too, especially on the loops where, the, where any, anywhere there's friction, I use this because it's a lot, it's a slicker. Uh, more slippery wax. All right, so that's good enough. I wax this. Let's shoot it again. Okay, let's hurl this waxed arrow with paraffin wax at the same block. It's definitely a different hole. I'm not sure that it went any further. Let's check it out. Okay, this is the shot with the paraffin wax on it, so let's see how we did. Oh, and that's in there. Oh, maybe we, yeah, we did. Oh, wow, we definitely did get more. Holy cow, that's like nine and three quarter inches. Wow, okay, so, um, wax your points and wax your shafts, and look at this slate point. That's a gain of uh, over two inches in penetration, right? And we measured seven and a half the first time, I'll have to check back, but, um, wow, pretty cool. So, do some tests, let me know what you find. Uh, I'm pretty impressed with this slate and with the wax. And uh, like I said, I'll leave the videos that uh, reference this stuff in the description below. Um, if you have any questions about the, the course on my bow backing course, you know where to find me. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay safe out there in this weird time and uh, 
Just look for stuff to do to keep yourself busy. Keep your mind staying positive. That's what I'm doing. See you guys next time.